Hi everyone, welcome back to Wiggle Worship and Splash Worship. I am so excited to be here today because today we are starting a new series for all summer where we're going to talk about compassion and uh, what the Bible says about compassion and also empathy. Uh, I know it's some big words and we're going to talk about what those mean and uh, we're really going to look at uh, different Bible stories that help us understand being compassionate to our neighbors and to each other and during different times in our lives. So, oh, oh excuse me, Whew. let's get started. Uh, oh, I gotta yawn again. I am so tired today. Uh, I apologize for yawning. Oh my goodness. Oh, gonna yawn again. Well, let me ask you uh, to, as we get started, did anybody catch my yawn? Did anybody else yawn because I yawned? I know that sometimes happens and uh, it's really funny to watch like when, when we wiggle worship or at school when one person yawns and then another person yawns and then somebody else does too. Uh, it's catching, isn't it? Um, well, yeah, that is um, a really funny thing. And, you know, studies have shown that that even happens in dogs and chimpanzees right? Where, where they do the same thing. Well, you know, we also see it in wiggle worship with giggles. Sometimes someone giggles and somebody else giggles and then soon the whole room is giggling. I remember a couple times in tweens where we just couldn't stop laughing. It was really funny just because one or two people started. Um, and then sometimes also when people feel sad, we feel sad too. And I wonder why that is. Do you know? Well, um, something in your brain responds when you see somebody laugh or um, cry or yawn. It is something that uh, your brain is responding to because you have felt that same way before. And that is called empathy. When you are able to almost feel the same way that somebody else felt. And that's actually um, the beginning of compassion. Uh, compassion is taking that empathy and not only feeling the way somebody else feels, but then also doing something about it. But the first piece of that is seeing somebody. So let me give you an example. If I see someone step on a Lego, I feel bad for them. Uh, I feel compassion for them because I know that it hurts. Now my foot may not be hurting at the exact same time, but I do know that it hurts and my empathy kicks in and my brain reminds me that there's some suffering there. And if my cat compassion is strong, then I can even offer to help you. So compassion is about seeing hurt, recognizing that hurt, feeling that hurt with you through empathy, and then trying to ease that hurt and help you through it, right? So that is what compassion is all about, and that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, in order to actually feel empathy and show empathy, right, um, we have to see it again. And I know I mentioned that that's kind of the beginning step, but we have to either hear people's voices or see people's faces to understand and to recognize that they are hurting or that they are happy or they, um, or they are tired, right? If you don't see somebody or, or hear somebody, you don't know that. So that's the very first step. And so we want to welcome everyone to the table. And what I mean by that is that table can be different things. So you could have uh, a table at home where you're having dinner and you're able to see everybody's faces or maybe snack during the middle of the day. You're able to see each other and talk to each other and hear each other. You can also, uh, maybe it's a lunch table at school where everybody is welcome. Or at church, the communion table that we have, everyone is welcome there. Or in some of the cases right now where we're not able to gather with all of our friends, what we are able to do is um, hear each other and gather online with each other. And that's a table too. Um, so 
as we go through this, I want to invite everybody to the table. Just like God invites everyone to his table, he welcomes everyone. And everyone is included. And um, I want you to think about all of the people that you would like to include. Now, we are going to say a prayer. Um, and I'm going to ask you to do something special. I want you to put one hand on your head and one hand on your heart. And the reason I want uh, to do that is because we know that compassion uh, is part in our head, right? We can think about it, but it also it's something that we feel. So let's pray and you can repeat after me. Okay, so close your eyes and we'll repeat it. God of compassion, we open up our minds and hearts to learn from you today. Teach us to see and welcome each other and live like Jesus every day. Amen. Now, let's talk a little bit about our Bible story. Today's Bible story is called uh, The Father and Two Sons, or The Prodigal Son in some cases, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Now, hopefully you have already watched it, and when you watch it, um, what you can do, since we've just opened up our online Wiggle Worship Room, is that you can go to the Worship Room and click the Bible that is in my hand. And if you click that Bible, a little video will pop up and it will, um, it will be a video of our Bible story for today. And it's really fun to watch, so I encourage you to do that. Um, but just in case you haven't done that already, uh, I am going to tell the story again. And one of the things that I would like you to do is any time that you hear a word that makes you feel something, or maybe something that is an action that somebody is doing uh, in regard to feeling, then I want you to act it out. I may give you a little hint along the way, okay? So I'm going to read this story and I want you all to act out. I'm not going to act out. I want you to. All right. Jesus told this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger brother greedily, what would you do if you're greedy, demanded his inheritance, turned his back on his family and left them for a far away country. He wasted all his money he took from his family. Soon he became needy and hungry. Even though he felt ashamed, he decided to return home, hoping his father might welcome him back. When his father saw him, he was filled with compassion. He ran out to his son and threw his arms around him. He was so happy that he was alive. The father got a big dinner together with the best food and drink to give thanks for his son's safe return. Meanwhile, the older brother came in from the field. He was tired because he worked hard all day. And when he heard the music and dancing, he became very angry and refused to go in. His father went to the older brother to persuade him to come. But he said, I've listened to you and I have worked hard for you all of these years and you never gave me a party. My brother comes home after wasting all his money and you throw him a huge party. His father said to him, son, I love you. You know what is mine is yours, but people matter more than possessions. We thought we lost your brother, but he is home now. Come to the table and celebrate with us. That's a pretty great story. Did you hear words that uh, you acted out? Maybe it was being hungry or angry or ashamed, um, or maybe it was being compassionate and loving like the father. So there are all sorts of different words that you could act out in that one story. Now, um, there are ways that we saw compassion in that story. We heard the word, but let's think about this. 
When have we heard about compassion just in the lesson today? First of all, we heard that um, when you gather around a table and see people and hear people, you can understand more, you can learn more, um, and you can see and feel the emotions that people at the table are feeling. So that's really important to remember that everybody should be present at the table so we can hear and learn and see. Now in our Bible story, uh, the father saw his son and he welcomed him home with open arms. He understood that his son was sad and was ashamed for what he had done. And his father said, that's okay, I still love you, I welcome you home. That's compassion. But he also showed compassion for the older son and sometimes we forget that. His, his older son was angry and his older son was frustrated and, and, and said, why didn't I get this? And his father didn't say, that's not important. His father said, you know what? I love you and I've always loved you and you're still here and I still want to welcome you to the table so we're all together and we can all be together and love each other. And he reminded him that, he reminded both sons actually, that, that they are fully loved no matter what. So let's once again say our prayer. We're going to say a different prayer. And then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the craft that you are welcome to do this week. So um, again, do uh, put a hand on your heart and a hand on your head and we'll do a quick prayer. Welcoming one, and you can repeat this, I'm sorry, repeat after me. Welcoming one, your warm, wide open arms are always open. Drawing us into your heart, full of love. Make our arms your own, helping us see and welcome with compassion all those we meet. Amen. I'm really excited to talk about compassion with you uh, this summer, and we'll be talking about loving our neighbor next week and how we can show compassion and do special things uh, with and for our neighbors uh, as we are um, uh, seeing uh, their feelings and emotions and feeling them ourselves and how we're able to share with them. Now, in our craft room, if you go into the Wiggle Worship room, again, the very beginning, on the side, there is a little signpost and you can click all the different places to go for Wiggle Worship. And there's some great music in there from Lexi and Andrew. Um, and then uh, there is a special craft room. And the craft this week is to create a centerpiece of your very own that you can put in the middle of your table so you can gather everyone at the table and share with each other and learn from each other and be uh, have empathy for one another and be compassionate towards one another. So um, there are six different centerpieces that are on the shelf. Uh, there's one that's making a centerpiece with the branch, maybe from your yard. Um, there is one that is using some tissue paper. Maybe you have tissue paper and a twisty tie at, at home that you can make a special big fluffy flower. Uh, there's one uh, about using a pinwheel. There's all sorts of different ideas there. And those are just ideas. But you, if you would like, maybe you have some pipe cleaners and some clay that you want to just stick some pipe cleaners in. You can do whatever you want. I would love to see your special uh, um, your special centerpieces this week. So feel free to post them in our Facebook page. We'd love to share uh, the different centerpieces that our children are making for their families and friends um, as we gather at the table together and welcome everybody. So um, please share your centerpiece and um, please enjoy the Wiggle Worship Room. We're so excited to roll it out. Um, we are going to be sharing all of our Bible school information very soon, um, probably in the next couple days, and uh, you'll get all that information too. So I'm super excited. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. 
Um, I encourage you to uh, listen to others with your heart and with your mind um, and really feel that empathy and start thinking about how, um, how we can be together um, even when we're far apart and be there for each other and understand the feelings that everyone is having right now. Um, let's pray and uh, then we'll do our blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this special time in Wiggle Worship and Splash Worship. Uh, we understand that compassion is so important, but it can be hard to understand sometimes, Lord. So help us really see our friends and family and those that are at the table with us, no matter which table we're at. Help us see and recognize the feelings that they feel and help us then be compassionate not only recognizing it, but um, helping each other through um, different situations and different feelings, Lord. Uh, we ask all this in your precious son's name. Amen. And as always, you are a blessing. God made you special just the way you are. Amen.